Martian class Furious. You are cleared for landing. Hello and welcome back once again to be myself and die five parsecs from home. Episode five! We have just fled the Putnik system as it was invaded by the Brood Swarm, which our guys managed to get out with no casualties because of the use of stimpacks at the last possible moment. I still have one, huzzah! I will probably need it again today, but... Before we get into anything, I want to ask that if you want to help out the channel, please do hit like, subscribe, or consider joining us here on the YouTube channel, or over on Patreon, or check out our merchandise in our store online. All the links for that are in the description below. Today, we are going to do something very cool, which we've never done before, which is after we fled Putnik 2, we are going to a new system, the system of Traxia, Traxia 5. How do I know that? I just made it up. Now, when you leave a planet, regardless of whether you flee it or anything like that, you do have to pay for your fuel. So I have to pay five credits in fuel, so I'm gonna do that now. That's gonna put me down to 10 credits, starting to get a little, a little skint, little skint on the old credits there. Now we roll on the Starship Travel Events Table, which is a D100 roll. What happened to the mad flight from Putnik 2 to the Traxia system? And the reason why we're going to the Traxia system, by the way, of course, is to track down the coordinates to this treasure map where the Vendetta's crew has presumably left some sort of stash which uh, our captain wants. Oh, that reminds me about something else. Uh, I said in the original episode of this that we were going to have to track down eight individual members in order to consider this series done. That may take us uh, up until 2076 or so, so I, I think I'm going to cut that back to a, a more manageable number, like, say, three. Culminating in the captain, of course, the enemy captain that, that uh, our guy's going after. So, all that out of the way, here we are. Starship travel events table. What happens to them on the way? 77. Uneventful trip. <laughs> A lot of time spent playing cards and cleaning guns. You can repair one damaged item. Woohoo! We have a damaged hazard suit and a damaged sonic emitter. I think I'm going to repair the sonic emitter. Any enemy within five inches of the person who carries this thing. Suffers a minus one to all two hit rolls when shooting. New world arrival steps. This is something we haven't really done before either. First of all, any rivals you have will roll 1d6 and a 5 or more. They opt to follow you, otherwise they remain behind. Well, we did have two rivals from the old group. One was Jenna's. I don't think they're going to be following us, considering Jenna's no longer with us. Uh, but I believe Mara had another one. But neither of these we actually encountered are detailed, so... Let's just find out. The first rival, uh, ooh, the first rival does in fact follow us. What about the second one? No. So one of those rivals will follow us. The others were dispensed to the stars as they fled the invasion. And now we check for the licensing requirements on Traxia 5. Roll 1d6. On a 5 or 6, the world requires a freelancer license to perform patron jobs. So... No, they do not. So you do not require a license. So right away that tells me that this planet is not hugely into the bureaucracy. What kind of world is Traxia 5? 93. Oh, interesting. It's a null zone. No teleportation device of any type works. Well, we don't have any teleportation devices. No teleportation. So there's obviously some sort of interference in the atmosphere, probably. Maybe there's some sort of particle in the local atmosphere on the planet that interferes with teleportation or something like that. You know what? We have the optional rule of wild galaxy. You can rule twice for each visit. Let's do that. Let's do it. Let's see what else is uh, interesting about this place. 35. Restricted education. You must roll six or more to be approved for advanced training on this world. Okay, good to know. This may not come up. We don't have a whole lot of money to spend yet, but each campaign turn you must pay upkeep for your crew. It costs me a credit. 
but I do get that purifier, so I can sell water for one credit a turn. So that's gonna basically take care of the upkeep. Ship debt, we owe only 11. So you pay money, but if you still owe money, the, sh the amount is increased by one for interest. So I'm gonna pay three, which puts us down to seven. Ooh, that's not a lot. And the debt goes down by two. So we only owe nine on it now. So assign and resolve crew tasks. Well, one of the rivals did come after us, so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to keep that in mind. We are not gonna be looking for a patron now uh, because we're uh, going after the map. Yeah, you know what? I think Stein is gonna train. He earns one XP, which puts him up to seven. I'm gonna pay the seven to increase his reactions to two. Well, trading, I think, exploring, certainly. We're not looking for rivals. I don't think we're gonna recruit. So right now with the rival role, if I rolled a one, we'd have to deal with them. So I'm gonna put Mara on decoy duty. Katri has got a great savvy. You know what? Katri is going to, she's going to try and repair the kit. I'm gonna do that right now. Here we go. Plus two, plus two is four. No, so she unfortunately is unable to repair it. Let's resolve the captain and Kale as they go trading. The captain. Trade table. For the captain, 54. <laughs> Tourist garbage. <laughs> Not actually worth, worth anything but roll 1d6. On a five to six, you can add <laughs> one story point. Nope. Okay, tourist garbage. The captain trades for nothing. He trades for single shot cameras and bad hats, bead necklaces that fall apart because they're junk. But it does tell us that there's tourists that come here. So obviously this planet has something to offer people. All right, Kale, what about you? What did you trade for in the markets on Traxia 5? Fuel! Roll 1d6, you have secured that many credits worth of fuel which can be used to offset travel costs. I will take that. He finds five credits worth of fuel. That is basically our ticket out of here. Mara's on decoy, so Vine goes exploring. And mm, what does Vine find here in the world of Traxia? Traxia 5 in the spaceport 94. You make a useful contact. Next campaign turn, add plus one to your choice of a role to recruit, find a patron, or track a rival. I guess I don't know who that contact is until I decide how to use it. Actually, you know what? I don't know the details of this contact, but I can come up with a name. I'm gonna use Free League's Death in Space NPC generator. Five and 10. Lovi, what's the last name? Got four and 14. Lovi Lumen, Lovi Lumen. No idea who that is. We'll find out next time. <laughs> Determine job offers. We did not go to a patron because we're not interested in that. Assign equipment. Well, we do have this fancy new sonic emitter. You know what? I think I should maybe give it to someone who is going to advance into melee combat a little more often, which could be the captain with his fancy glare sword. You know what? I think it's got to be the captain. He's got he's got speed five. He's got a great hand-to-hand -hand weapon. I think it's gotta be him. Any enemy within five inches suffers minus one to all hit rolls when shooting. We don't resolve any rumors because we're already on a quest. Choose your battle. You must check that your rivals uh, give you the opportunity to choose your battle. We have one rival, but we have someone on decoy, which means that we're gonna roll plus one and there's no possible way. Four plus one is five. They do not find us, so Mara did her job by uh, acting as decoy. Continue a quest. The quest for the stash. So in terms of the battle that we'll be fighting, let's determine the deployment conditions of this quest as they track down the coordinates on this map that'll lead, to, lead them to somewhere on this planet. 16. Poor visibility. Maximum visibility, oh, is 1d6 plus eight and you re-roll at the start of each round. So it's some sort of shifting fog or something. Are there any notable sights on this uh, battlefield? 66 on a quest. Oh, person of interest, plus one story point if we interact with them. Person of interest is hanging around and now the objective. This is a quest. What is the objective of this battle? Fight off. Yeah, you know, we just did that. Am I gonna spend a story point to re-roll that? I think I will. I've got a bunch. And quest mission six, defend. Your objective is to drive off the enemy. To win, you must hold the field. I think we did one of these before, actually, but that's okay. Well, that actually makes sense. I guess we would have found the coordinates of the stash and then presumably, I'm gonna guess it's maybe the crew or people affiliated with the crew that, that, that stumble across us digging through their stuff. <laughs> we gotta fight them off, I'm gonna guess. Let's determine the enemy. Who 
is the enemy. Zero five. Criminal elements. Makes sense so far. And who? The criminal elements. 34. Cultists. Fringe space is full of odd para-religious groups congregating around this or that principle. They are often heavily armed and up to no good. Intrigue is a special rule for them. Roll 2d6 and add plus one if you killed a lieutenant and or unique individual on a nine or more, you obtain a quest rumor. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of them. They have plus two numbers, but it's plus one because it's defend. So maybe maybe they stashed their stuff on, on some like uh, off-world uh, uh, cult temple or something. Ah, that's kind of a cool, or maybe the, the, the ruins of a cult temple that's still kind of a, a place of reverence for these cultists. Okay, that, that's, that's cool. We roll 2d6 and we pick the highest, first of all, five. However, it is a defend mission, so that's plus one, and the cultists are plus two, so five plus two, or plus three rather, is eight. Now, because there's eight of them, gonna be two specialists of the eight, also a lieutenant who's a little tougher. Now, here's my real question. Are there unique individuals here? Basically, if we get nine or more, there's gonna be a unique individual here. Oh, there we go. There is finally a unique individual. And that unique individual definitely is going to be a member of the Vendettas crew. Who's the unique individual? An enemy bruiser. Let's give this bruiser a name, because this is finally a member of the, of the, of the Vendettas crew. Six. And nine. Isa. Four and ten. Isa Sun. Ooh, Isa Korata, Isa Sansa. He has no luck. He has toughness plus one. And he has a power claw, which is a big weapon. The big bruiser attached to the lieutenant of this cult. So yeah, Isa Sun obviously joined this cult after he left the crew of the of the uh, vendetta. Trying to work his way up the the ranks of the, the cult. We've got our enemies, we've got everything ready to go. Now we just need to set up the battlefield. It's a very good chance that if they win this battle, they might resolve this quest and find the stash of the vendetta. But before they do that, they'll have to take on these cultists and Issa Sun, the bruiser who is now part of this cult and who is our first legitimate vendetta target. Ha <laughs> ha, let's go to the table. So here we are at the Ruined Temple of Traxia V. Now, if you recall, we had uh, discovered that there was a restriction to advanced education on this world, which leads me to believe that there's a ton of religious cults and temples and everything. It's like it, it's essentially like a, 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 the a theocracy kind of kind of place. So there's there's all kinds of deities and cults and all this kind of stuff, which is the reason why these cultists are here at some fallen celestial deities, temple, or whatever it is. The point is, is there's a few things about this battlefield that we need to keep in mind. One, every round I need to roll 1d6 plus eight, and that is going to determine the visibility range because there is also something interesting about Traxia in that uh, there's no teleportation devices that are able to be used here. And I've, I've assumed that that is because there's some sort of weird like nanoparticulate matter in the atmosphere that coalesces sometimes into big banks of rolling fog. So that's what is going to explain that. Two plus eight is uh, 10 inches of restricted visibility here in, uh, in round one. The other thing is we have a person of interest here, and I think this person of interest might actually be uh, perhaps someone trying to escape this cult, uh, maybe like a victim of their sacrifice or something, and they're trying to escape. So uh, this person is 2d6 plus two inches in a random direction from the center of the table, which is right here. So let's have a look here. 11 inches this way. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's, uh, well, okay, that's good for us. That put, it looks like this person has uh, made, a, made a, a break for it and is on their way out of the temple complex and they're probably gonna run into our guys. So that's good, because if we interact with this person, we, we get a, a story point. Now, our cultists, we're going to set them up. There are a total of nine of them I rolled for that. Uh, five of them are regular cultists that are armed with shotguns. They're all aggressive, by the way, which means that they're going to be moving quite quickly towards us. There's two specialists here. Uh, one of them has an auto rifle, the other one has a handgun and a ripper sword. Ripper sword? And then there's a lieutenant who has a shotgun and a blade who is a little tougher. His combat's plus one. And then of course we determined Issa Sun who is the bruiser who is attached to that lieutenant and he uses a power claw which is um, really bad news because that thing hits for three 
damage. Also, he's fearless, so he never makes a morale test. He does not have a bonus to combat, which is good, but he's a little tougher. He's got a toughness of four. Their, uh, their panic is on one, so they're not prone to run away, which is not necessarily great. I do have to remember a few things. One, the rolling fog of nanoparticulate matter that currently uh, it, it gives us a 10 inch range. Also, I have one stint back left. <laughs> one, look, I wrote it on a card. One stint back right there. Also, the captain now has this sonic emitter. I have to remember this too. Enemies within five inches of the captain are going to be minus one to shoot. Try and remember all these details. It's so hard when you're doing this by yourself. You know, if you're playing with other people, you have more minds to help remind you of these things. But it's just me, and I only have so much space to write stuff down. We have to defend this area, which means we have to drive them off or defeat them. So now we set them up. So this is uh, essentially how they're starting out. Now, our guys start over here however they want. I think I'm going to start them over here because I want them to be able to grab that escaping cultist victim. Now we uh, roll to seize the initiative. Kale has his scanner bot, which gives us a plus one seize initiative roll. So we add uh, one from the scanner bot. We add one because we're outnumbered. Oh, and, uh, and add the highest savvy. So we're adding plus four to 2d6. 10 or more. Uh, here we go. Eight plus four is 12. We actually managed to seize the initiative. That is Freaking awesome! Okay, so that means every character in your crew may either take a normal move or may fire before the battle begins. Well, the range is only 10 inches because of that rolling fog and any shots taken only hit on a natural six. So it's not like, so I think they're gonna take the move. Starting over here with Stein. Stein's speed is five. Normal move, right there. Kale is also moving at five. He's gonna move over here. Our captain moves at five. He's gonna move up here. Vine, I think, is a little slower. He's gonna move up there. Let's do Mara first. She moves at four. She's gonna go two, and then one up to put herself there. Katri moves four. I think she's gonna move herself over there. And that is it for their seizing of the initiative. So we go into round one, ba, 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 round one. And now we're going to do their regular reaction rolls. Now we did increase a couple of their reaction rolls. Okay, here we go. Boom. Oh, wow. Well, that's terrible. Only one of them will act in the, the quick phase. Mmm, with a, I, I think I'm going to use it for movement to get to cover. You know what? I'm going to give it to the captain here. Captain's gonna move on quick. Everybody else is gonna go on slow. If he moves and dashes, he's got a total uh, speed of seven. So I think what he wants to do is he wants to move two here, and then he's gonna climb this here for six to give him some sort of height advantage and then sort of move over here. So yes, that is his whole round in the fast phase, which means we now go to the enemy phase. Their move is only four with opponents in sight. Well, nobody's in sight because there's only a range of 10 inches right now. So that means they're unable to see opposition. So they're gonna advance as fast as possible towards the nearest opponent attempting to enter a, into a brawl. Nobody is within 10 inches of visual range. Nobody can see each other with this nano particulate matter roiling across the battlefield here. Uh, but we do know that the closest enemy is of course right now the captain. So this guy is going to dash his six inches over here. This guy's gonna dash his six inches over here. Advanced as fast as possible towards the nearest opponent. Doesn't say anything about staying in cover, so they're just, they're running as fast as they can. This guy would have gone a little further, I think. This guy, yeah, he's gonna wind up there. This guy is gonna wind up there. Uh, I'm gonna deal with the lieutenant here. He's gonna wind up there. And of course, Issa is right beside him. They're gonna run, I think, over here, or towards the captain. It is towards the closest opponent, and the captain is the closest opponent. That's the end of their movements, which we now we go into the slow phase, which is everybody except for the captain. Let's start over here with, uh, with Stein. Stein is gonna move up three or two. He's gonna interact with this. He basically runs up to him as a prisoner, you know, dressed in rags or something, maybe some sort of ceremonial, you know, <laughs> sacrificial outfit or something. And he runs up to him and Stein grabs him and, and says, you know, quick, get back to our ship this way, come on, and just just follow the trees through there. And he, and he basically will uh, we'll get the story point for that. Yay! But that is his action. He moved and interacted. So that was Stein. We got the person of interest. Huzzah. Huzzah! 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 <laughs> Kale, I think, is going to move up to cover here. 
So Kale moves up to here. Does he have a shot after moving? No, they're still not within range. So this is all just a positioning. Now he only moved a couple of inches. He's gonna climb up in here beside the captain. Vine only moves four, so Vine is gonna get himself over here, set himself up for a shot over here. Again, we've got our snipers up here, but uh, or, or, or Mara with her sniper rifle, but they can't see the enemy, so instead, I think Katria is going to use her basic uh, uh, full move and put herself up here, hopefully to get some sort of line of, of sight advantage or something. That is the end of round one. We go to round two. We must, of course, re-roll the fog to see what it does. 1d6 plus eight. Boom, 11. Okay, well, it's slightly more. So uh, the, the fog parts a little bit, opening up a little bit of visibility. Now we go to our reactions. Okay, well, again, uh, we've got two people that can act in the quick phase. So it's gonna be Kale and the captain who are operating the, on the quick. Everybody else is gonna be on the slow. They have targets. They can now see within 11 inches. So the captain can see basically these two guys, but the Lieutenant and Isa is, are just out of range, unfortunately, by like millimeters. <laughs> uh, and Kale uh, has the same targets. Now, oh, I forgot the captain. Duh, the captain is a communicator. He rolls two dice. I have to remember that for next time. You see, there's always something you forget. The captain's communicated. He rolls two dice and takes the best. And it doesn't matter. He acted first anyway, both times. So the captain is going to fire at the lead shotgun cultist here. Uh, this won't count for cover because of the height advantage of, uh, that Captain and Kale both currently enjoy. He's a, an open target within the range, so it's a five up hit. Here we go. The captain's rolling at plus one combat as the, oh, okay. As the rifle kicks out, but he hasn't moved. He's aiming. So he can re-roll that. He's aiming and he gets four plus one is five. And of course that is a hit as he blasts this cultist right here. Their toughness is three. What happens to that lead cultist? He is stunned and knocked back. Now, because these guys are so close to each other, knockback is actually pretty good because he's gonna be knocked back into this dude here. And I think what that means, the moving character comes to a halt and is stunned. The character collided with is pushed one inch along the direction of movement and is then stunned. This could be a chain reaction <laughs> because they're all clustered up together. So this guy moves back. He can't really move back. So it basically stuns him, winds up stunning this guy too, who also moves back into Issa directly away from, and that is gonna stun Issa. He basically takes them entirely by surprise with that blast of his military rifle, causing them to sort of stumble back into each other and stuns them briefly, which is great. That was him. Kale also fires. Kale's combat is zero, so he's firing with a five up military rifle. Four will just miss, unfortunately. Okay, that brings us to the enemy phase. So again, stunned enemies can either move or attack. So we'll start over here with these two guys here. Now, they're gonna move half a move just right behind the cover of that thing. Now, they are using shotguns, have a range of 12, and they're within 11, so they can target through the through the, the broken down walls of this unpainted piece of terrain. I didn't have time to paint any of this stuff. Which means the cultists move up and fire. Their combat is zero. They are using shotguns, which means they get two shots, the first shot. Nope, first shot with the shotgun misses, second one, there's no combat bonus, so also misses there. As the slugs burst into the pieces of fallen masonry, causing bits of rock to fly everywhere. Second cult is shooting at the captain, same deal. Six up, two shots. First one, miss. Second one, also miss. Good thing they don't have a combat bonus. That was these two. So these guys are stunned now, and stun means you can either move or fire. So they are sort of well, let's see. They, they see the enemy, so they're going to move at least a half move towards the opponent. Hey guys, post-production Trev here. Just realized that uh, those stunned enemies should have actually taken a shot. Uh, on page 41, it says, Stunned enemies will always fire at the nearest target if one is visible. There were visible targets, so they should have fired instead of moving. Anyway, just try to get the rules right. There's a lot of things to remember, like how many stim packs one has.
which means that this guy's gonna move into this cover. Well, he doesn't really have cover from them anymore, does he? Well, now, yeah, now that he's basically right there, he can hunker down and he can use this grating for cover. So that'll be him. He only gets one action and that was it. And he's no longer stunned. This guy as well, I think is gonna move at least a half action towards the nearest enemy, which is going to also put him there and in cover. And then over here, let's do with this cultist here. He can not see the enemy, so he moves full speed ahead until he does see the enemy. And he's gonna move right there. Now he's moved, and now he does see an enemy, and the closest enemy is gonna be Kale, so he fires twice for shot. That's a miss, because it's a uh, six up. Second shot, also a miss. Whew. Over here, the lieutenant. Now the lieutenant has a shotgun and a blade. I think he's gonna move into cover here with his four and he's gonna fire up at the captain. And these guys are not within five inches so they don't get penalized by the sonic emitter. Lieutenant is plus one combat with a shotgun. First shot, five plus one is six. The captain is gonna be hit by that. Captain's toughness is four. Okay, one, so the captain is stunned from that one shot and the second shot will miss. Okay, that was the lieutenant, and now Isa will go with the lieutenant. He's stunned, so that's all he can do. Meanwhile, these are our specialists, so these guys, can they see their enemy? They are just out, so they're gonna move uh, quickly towards uh, the closest enemy, which is this person. I think he's gonna move his four sort of this way, which will put him in range of the captain, but not Kale because of the visibility issues. So he does have an auto rifle and he's going to fire at the captain. We'll miss. Over here, the other lieutenant with the handgun and ripper sword is going to move two and two. Oh, you still can't see his opponent. So he's gonna, he's gonna dash two inches up, which puts him in cover there. And that was the end of the enemy's round. Everybody can act on the ground here. Stein has a move of five, I believe. So he's gonna move up to there. Does he have a shot? Yeah, he does. He can basically shoot this guy right here. He's just on the limits of that visibility because of the roiling fog. His hand laser is the only one that can hit him. Here we go. No, he'll miss. That was Stein. Vine over here. I don't believe Vine is within 11. He is not. So Vine still does not have a shot because of the fog. He can see that, he can see right beside him. Stein runs up and it's blasting away at something, but Vine can't see it. Over here, these guys are definitely out of, so they have no shot either. So they are basically, again, they go into snap fire mode, but they're already in the slow action too. It doesn't really help them. Does Katria want to move up? I think Katria needs to climb down to and two to put her there. She still doesn't see anybody. So that's basically it for her. Mara is just searching for a target from her uh, lofty perch over here. And that brings us to the end of the round. We go to round three now, and we're going to roll the fog. 1d6 plus eight, 10 inches. So the fog rolls back in a little bit. Let's do our reaction rolls to see. Okay, that's pretty good. There's three twos there, so I think three... Oh, the guy! Ah, ah, hold on, I have to reroll it. I have to reroll it because I have to remember the captain does his own thing. So this is for everybody else, okay? Oh, well, that's even better. Okay, so that's it for everybody else. And then the captain... The captain rolls two of these for himself. It takes the best, they're both the same. <laughs> so the captain's on two, for sure. Stein has two, Mara has two. Kale has one. I think Kale has to take the the one. Yeah, Kale has to take the one, which means that the two will go to Vine and Stein, which means these guys go uh, in the slow turn. Quick turn. The captain here is stunned, so he only gets one thing. Well, he's gonna shoot. <laughs> he's definitely gonna shoot. It is now 10 inches away, so everybody is within range, including Isa. I think he sees Isa there with this big power claw, raw, seeing him. And I think he raises that military rifle and bah, 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 fires at Isa. He's gotta get six up, but he has a plus one to combat. Does he do it? No, unfortunately. He misses, but he's no longer stunned. 
So that was the captain. Kale's gonna take his quick turn as well. Kale's not stunned. Everybody's behind cover, so it doesn't really matter. He's gonna shot at whoever he wants. I think he's gonna try and blast this guy. He's gotta get six because he's got no combat bonus. Unfortunately, he misses over here in the fast round. 10 inches, 10 inches. 10 inches, tell me we've got 10 inches. No! Okay, Stein could move up. He's got a, he's got, we could climb this building four and then go five. He could go, yeah, you know what? He's gonna do that. He's gonna move his five, which puts him inside there. He moved, he climbed up his five and he can fire now because he is within 10 and he's gonna take a shot at this guy right there. Let's, uh, so he rolls up, he does have a bonus of plus one, and he misses. <laughs> his hand laser, unfortunately, boom. Over here we have Vine in the quick phase. Vine still cannot see anybody because it's a 10 inch range. I think he's, if he moves here, can he see anybody? Yes. So he's just gonna move. And remember, he has the battle visor, so he re-rolls ones no matter what. So it is, it's in his advantage to move and fire. Anyway, there's no advantage for him to aim. So he moves his four. Or three and a half over here. And now he's behind cover, but he does have a shot definitely at basically anybody he wants within this area. So the question is, I think he also sees, <laughs> I think he also sees that bruiser with, and with this big military laser <laughs> blast off at Isa. He's got plus one to his combat. Here we go. And he, oh, well, he rerolls ones because of his battle visor. <laughs> nope, still a miss, unfortunately. Okay, that brings us to the enemy phase. So, they're aggressive, which means if they're in sight of an enemy, they move at least half a move and do a thing. None of them are stunned. So this guy could climb. This is only a one inch up. Yeah, one inch, one down. So that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna go one and one, which gives him two. He'll move over here. And now he's gonna fire up at, he can basically see Stein, that's the closest. And Stein is now within six inches of him. Not within five, so the Captain Sonic Emitter doesn't affect him yet. But he moves and fires, and the shotgun has two shots. He is in cover, within six inches and in cover, so that's five up. The first shot at Stein, missed. Second shot at Stein, missed. This guy could also see his enemy, but he'd have to, he can't really climb this, it's too high. So he's gonna follow his buddy. He's gonna do his two inches up, and then one inch down, that's the end of his movement. He does have a shot. It's a tough shot, but he's gonna fire at Stein again. Two shots, blast. First one is one. He can't re-roll it, he didn't aim. Second shot is five, no bonus, so he misses both times. Wow, wow. With that, that is good, over, yeah. They're going to move towards the closest enemy. At least a half move. So this guy, he's gonna move four. Ah, he's with six inches of Stein but not within five inches of the captain. So he fires, these are five up shots. First one is a miss, second one is a miss. This guy moves, he clambers over this terrain. It's not really difficult terrain, so it's just a straight move. He moves four this way, and again, now is he within five of the captain? He's not, but he is still within six of Stein. So Stein, because he just happens to be out there in front with his pistols blasting away, is the target of this new attack shotgun first. Oh, the shotgun hits, blam. It does plus one damage against Stein's toughness of four. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Three plus one is four. Oh, Stein's gonna be taken out by this. Do I spend, do I spend a story point to re-roll this? Yeah, I do, I do. So I'm down to four. Okay, this is the toughness roll for Stein. Or the damage roll against his toughness. Two plus one is three, Stein is just stunned. <laughs> oh, and Stein moves back. Oh, see, I always forget. When you get hit, you move back. So he's moved back. That actually helps him in this case. <laughs> Stein is stunned right there. Post-production Trev here again. Just a little note for you rules heads out there. A shotgun has two shots, but in this case, the first shot knocked Stein back one inch and out of the line of sight of the second shot. And a shotgun has the focus trait, which means that both shots have to be on the same target. That's the reason why there was no second shot on Stein. There's another shotgun guy who I think now the closest target to him is probably Vine. So he's gonna move four inches this way. Arrgh! And he's gonna take a shot at Vine through cover. Now this guy is not quite within five inches of the captain, but he is within six inches of Vine and he blasts with his shotgun, kablow. Two shots, first one 
is a miss. Second one is a four. Also a miss. Blam, blam, blam. Okay, the lieutenant. The lieutenant has shotgun and blade. So he is going to move. Uh, he is going to move over here, up this hill, and over the other side. So I think he's going to remain in cover here. At least half a move. And he's going to remain in cover. And he's going to take a shot at the closest target, which is going to be Vine as well. This is a six up shot. He's got a shotgun. He does, however, have a plus one to hit. So he needs to, if he rolls fives, he hits. First one is a miss. Second one is a miss. With a roll of five, he needed six. Kablow, kablow. Isa is the guardian, always stays with the lieutenant and does what he does. He has no ranged weapon, so Ice is basically gonna go up here and just kind of uh, take cover uh, there beside the beside the captain in the, or beside the lieutenant in the uh, dump. Okay, over here, I think uh, Katria might be the next target for these guys, so they're gonna move. This is one of the specialists with his pistol and ripper sword. He's gonna move his four over to here. Does he have a shot? What's the distance, 10? No, they still can't see each other. So he's gonna move another two. He's gonna dash two, which puts him there. This guy, this specialist with his auto rifle, he does see his enemy, so he's gonna move at least two. He's gonna move two this way or three that way. Uh, closest target is Vine behind cover, not within six. One shot with the auto rifle and it is a miss. And that is the end of our enemy's turn. We now go to the slow phase, which is just Katria and Mara. Katria over here. Well, obviously she now can see this dude who is within 10 inches, but just barely. He is taking cover in the ruins of this temple. So she is going to fire at him. She needs a six up in order to hit. She only fires once because she's using a military rifle, but she does have a plus one. Here we go. Five plus one is six. She hits him. Crack. Oh, she's just awesome. The specialist. Yes, toughness of three. Does she wound him? She takes him out again. Katria gets the first kill. Pow. <laughs> specialist is taken out. Awesome. And over here, Mara still does not have a shot. You know what? I think she's got to move. So she is going to go climb down two inches and move two inches because she's only got a speed of four which puts her there. She does see him, but just barely. It is through cover, so she's gonna take the shot, but she's minus one. I don't think she can make this shot. It, does she have a bonus? No, she can't. She's using a heavy weapon, so it's minus one when she moves, so she can't, she doesn't have a shot. We go to round four now, with very little actually having, uh, having happened. Let's see what we do here with the fog, the fog of war. Two says eight plus two is 10 inches, so nothing changes, the fog is still uh, reducing visibility to 10 inches. Do some fancy reaction rolls. The captain's gonna get his two and take the best one. Well, he's gonna be on one, obviously. And then everybody else. Two and a one, so. Well, who needs to go first? I think the guys up here need to go first. So I'm gonna give the one to Kale, and I'm gonna give the two to Stein, which means that these other folks are in the slow phase. In the quick phase, over here. Let's do Kale, actually. Kale aims and fires. Now, he can hit anybody he wants. Uh, these occultists are converging on their position very quickly, and they're probably going to try and climb up and brawl them. So Kale is going to blast away. Now, here's the thing. Kale could do a thing here. I don't think it's a smart thing to do. <laughs> but he could do a panic fire. He's within half his base range. He would roll two additional shots. Attacks are resolved one at a time with each being directed at the closest available target at that moment. But after the volley is over, he's out of ammo. He might actually be able to hit theoretically three of them, but he'd be out of ammo, which would leave him only with his blade and his handgun. Oh, he still has a handgun. Oh, he's definitely gonna do this. He's definitely gonna open up. He just, ah, panic fires. They're gonna come up here and kill us all, man. But in a weird precursor voice, they're going to come up and kill us all, man. And ba 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 ba. The first one on this guy. Five. He's within six and he's in the open because he's he's you know not taking cover right there because of the height advantage. So he hits him with the first shot. Damage tough to three. Takes him out. Boom. Nice one. 
All right, but Panic Fire, he continues to spray the area. Bow, 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 bow. Over here, this guy for the second shot. This guy is also, this guy's uh, not in cover there. So this, is he within six? Is he within six, technically? He is just barely within six. So it this is a within six and no cover. This is a three up shot. Yes, and the damage against Toughness 3. Okay, boom, stuns him, knocks him back. Knocks him back an inch, ugh, it stuns him. And finally, the third shot as he's about to empty the clip, empty the magazine, he fires, that's another hit. And is it against Toughness? No, oh, it's Toughness 2 and 3, which means he only stuns him. So he moves back, ugh, into there and is also stunned and click, 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 click as Kale is out. <laughs> He spent all of the ammunition. So he's gonna have to draw his pistol. Uh, Stein is stunned, so he can't aim and fire. He can only fire, but he's going to do that and lose his stun by doing so. This guy's in the open. He's gonna fire at this dude right here. Pow, with his laser. He's rolling at plus one. This should be an easy shot because the guy is in the open. Boom, six is a hit. Uh, this is a regular against toughness three. Two, is there any damage bonus to the laser? There is not, so he stuns this guy. Back he goes, Arrgh. and stunned. That was Stein and the captain, the captain, the captain. Oh, captain, my captain. He kind of wants to be closer to them. He's gonna move up an inch. That might make the difference there. I just have to remember, within five inches, it's gonna be that sonic emitter <laughs> pulsing out its thing. Anyway, he moves and he's gonna fire now. Pow, at um, this guy's technically in cover. They're all, well, this guy's the only one not in cover. Uh, because of the height range, so he's gonna fire. He's he's beyond six inches, so this is a this is a five up shot. The captain's plus one. Four plus one is five. It's a hit against toughness two. So this guy gets stunned again. So he is stunned two now. If you get stunned three times, you're out. And he also gets knocked back. Ugh. You can see that there, but stunned for two. Stunned for two. So that was the captain. That was the last of the quick phase, which brings us to the enemy phase, starting over here. This guy is not stunned. He's gonna move at least half towards. The closest enemy is Stein. He's gonna put him right there at the edge of this thing. He's gonna look up. He's gonna blast away at Stein. He I'm gonna call because of the angle of this that there's gonna be cover. Now he is now within five inches of the captain, so he's minus one to hit. So this is going to be a five up he needs, but he's minus one, five, minus one, and he's got no combat bonuses, four, so he misses with the first shot. Second shotgun also misses, blam, blam, and that's because of that sonic emitter. No, 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 no. As the cultist kind of ah, clutches his head, but he still blasts away with the shotgun, that was him. This guy is stunned, so he can only do one thing, he's gonna move. Oh, they're just being, they're being forced back with a barrage of fire, but not killed. Four puts him there and it reduces one of his stuns. So he's stunned and that's it for him. This guy also moves four. He can only do one thing because he's stunned. He's no longer stunned. This guy also, also stunned is gonna move four up to here. Ah, but gets rid of his stun. This is starting to get scary. The Lieutenant is still aggressive. He doesn't have any special tactical training or anything. These guys aren't gonna stay in cover and fire like they would if they were, you know, smart. So, the, ah, they're, <laughs> they're running towards the enemy. So he's gonna go to here. He can fire. He does have a shotgun, the Lieutenant, at plus one. Closest enemy right now is Vine behind cover and also within five, that's a five up shot. Two shots because it's a shotgun and he gets plus one to hit. First one is a miss, wow. Second one, four plus one is five, which is what he needs to hit Vine. Oh wait, no, he's now within, he's now within five inches of the sonic emitter, which means he misses. Okay, that was the second shot, boom. Isa, of course, is going to move up his four as well to, to remain next to the lieutenant. I think this guy, I think this guy's gonna actually move towards the enemy. At least half a move, it doesn't have to do a, a full move. And he's gonna fire through cover at Mera. Specialist with an auto gun, no bonus to hit. Nope, he misses, plow! That's it for the enemies. We now go to the slow phase where Vine, only because of that sonic emitter, <laughs> wasn't taken out, um, potentially. Vine is very close to this guy, so look at this. He's within three. He pretty much has to target th this dude right here. This dude is not within cover with respect to Vine, so this is an easy shot with his military laser. 
huge long range. That is a hit, no problem against this guy. The damage is four, boom, blasts him, takes him out. Ah! And that is it for him. Over here, we have Mera. Mera definitely now has a shot. Everybody's within 10 inches of them, for sure. The, we're seeing now the fog of war is starting to become irrelevant as people get closer together and we're about to enter hand to hand, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, Mera's gonna take a shot. It's gonna be six up because he's beyond six inches. Six up shot. Does she have a plus one? She does not. She's gotta get that up. Does she hit the guy? Two is a miss. <laughs> Katria over here. She as well is going to fire. She does have a plus one. So she rolls. And five plus one is a six hit to this guy. It's regular damage. You get toughness three. Takes him out. The specialist whose toughness is only three is taken out by Katria, who is just. A living goddess, apparently, with a gun. So, so good, Catherine. Oh, you're so good, aren't you? Yes, you are. I love you. You're awesome. Okay, that brings us to the end of the round, where we go to round five. Check. 1d6 plus 8 for the fog. 11. The fog's not really doing much, but everybody's within range now. No problem, no problem. We go to our reaction rolls. Captain gets his communicator roll, so he takes the best of these two. He's gonna take the one. And then everybody else rolls and we see where we are at. Twos or less are very good. Ooh, okay, well, three of them are gonna be slow. Vine has reactions two, he can use it. And Kale has reactions one, so he can't. Stein has reactions two, so Stein's gonna take the two, which means that everybody else is gonna be on the slow. Let's do the captain first. He's going to aim and fire. Pa -pa -pa -pow. These guys are not in cover with relation to him because that height advantage. So he can basically shoot whoever he wants. This guy's almost within three. I'm going to say he's going to have to fire at him. So he blasts away at a plus one. Oh no, but he aimed, he aimed, he aimed. So he rerolls ones and three plus one is four. That is a hit against toughness four. Oh, it's just a stun again. Boom, this guy gets forced back. Ah, there and is stunned. Stein's gonna blast at this guy here. Uh, again, no cover for him. He gets plus one to his attack. Six is definitely a hit against the toughest. Five takes him out. <laughs> and Vine is the last one to act in the quick vase. Vine is going to shoot at his closest target here, which is in fact the lieutenant. Uh, lieutenant's out in the open, so this is a, uh, it's not within, is it within six? It is, this is a three up shot and Vine has a plus one combat. Five plus one is six. Now the Lieutenant's toughness is only three. So three up to kill the Lieutenant. No, the Lieutenant gets stunned, gets moved back. Guess what? Into Isa, stunning him as well. Enemy phase. Okay, oh! Do you know what I totally forgot? I, I remembered all these things. I remembered, you know, I've got the stim packs here. I remembered all this stuff, but I didn't do the morale phase. Oh, you see, there's always something. There's always something when you play by yourself. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, and I also didn't do optional battle rounds because there's enough for me to deal with as this is. Roll a number of dice equal to the number of figures that were removed due to combat this round. How many got taken out? I think two. Every die that falls within the panic range for the enemy indicates one of them will bail. Oh, I can't believe I forgot to do this, but okay, let's just see. Uh, their panic's one, so they don't panic. They probably wouldn't have panicked anyway because there's only one and Isa, of course, doesn't panic at all. Nonetheless, dummy. Dum, da dum, 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 dum. <laughs> I mean, not really. There's just so much going on, isn't there? So many things to bloody remember. Oh, yeah. That panic roll was for last round, by the way. So, yeah. Okay. Enemy phase. Well, again, they have to move. But these guys are stunned, so they can't move and fire. So they're going to move up to here. He's no longer stunned. He's going to move up to here. They're, they're trying to, like, climb this thing, basically. He's no longer stunned. And he's going to move up here. Oh. Isa is also going to move up here. Ugh. Which takes care of their stuns, but that's all they can do. All right, we go into our slow phase, which I think is just these two over here. Oh, and Kale. Kale is out. Click, 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 click. Kale will move to here and fire down with his pistol. <laughs> this is a three up shot. Does he hit him? <laughs> <laughs> no, he misses it. He, he couldn't have aimed because he moved. Ugh. Everybody can see through the fog now. It is looking pretty good for our guys, though, although this is about to get terrible. Mera. Mera takes aim. 
and fires at Isa. <laughs> Mara's firing uh, in the open, five up. Yes, she hits with a six. She's shooting at Isa. Isa's toughness is four. This is plus one to damage. Yes, he takes out Isa before he could get close to Vine with the power claw. Boom! Now, Isa does not have luck. A lot of unique individuals have luck. He does not. And over here, I think that we've got a five up shot as well because he doesn't get cover from this from Katria, who raises her auto fire with plus one and rolls a three plus one is four. She misses. <laughs> because of the range. Unfortunately, that is it for her, and that is the end of the round. We go to round six now. The fog, not that it's really gonna matter. Four plus eight is uh, 12, so the fog is uh, lifting. It's lifting, it's lifting. But again, not really gonna matter so much now because we are entering into hand-to-hand -hand combat pretty much. Let us look at the captain. The captain's rolling. Ooh, the captain's gonna be in the slow phase because his reactions are two. Everybody else. Oh, this is not looking good at all. Um, everybody else is gonna be in the slow except for one of them who can act on two. I think it's gotta be Vine. Does Vine have reactions of two? He does, he does. Vine could fire his infantry laser or he could charge into combat with his boarding saber, which is a melee weapon. When brawling, the, fire may, the fighter may reroll the die. You know what? I think that's exactly what he's gonna do. I think Vine, he pulls the boarding saber and charges into a brawl. Now this happens immediately as soon as you enter a brawl, boom, we do the, the roll. So Vine's combat is plus one. He's using a melee weapon, which is plus two, and he gets to re-roll his die. He gets to re-roll because it's elegant. The Lieutenant's using a blade. The Lieutenant has a combat of plus one and a blade gives you plus two. So basically, they're both rolling a plus three, except that Vine gets to re-roll his. So Vine's gonna be the white. They're both rolling at plus three. Oh, look at that, it's a tie. Oh, it's a tie, which means that they would hit each other. Oh, see, the thing is, if Vine re-rolls that, he could get less, in which case he does not get hit. Or he could beat him. Oh, what do we do? What do we do, Vine? Do you take the chance? Well, let's look at his personality here. He's all about freedom. He grew up at a space station. He's a soldier, I think he's gonna re-roll it. Ah, with the elegance of the weapon, here we go. No! <laughs> oh, so he goes in for a hit, but unfortunately the lieutenant is faster with that blade and hits him. The lieutenant is going to do damage with the blade, which is zero against Vine's toughness of four. Okay, so he knocks Vine back and stuns him. That was on Vine's turn too. Ooh, back he goes and he is stunned. <laughs> okay, that was on Vine's turn. And now he was the only one who acted on the quick turn, so it's the enemy's turn. Well, obviously he charges in with that blade, trying to finish him. Now, Vine is stunned, which means the enemy, we remove the stun, but the enemy is going to get an additional plus one. This is not good. So now Vine is rolling at plus three. The enemy's rolling at plus four. Mm. Okay, this is great because six plus three is nine, three plus four is seven. Vine wins that engagement with his sword. He's not gonna reroll the elegant, obviously. Ah! By the way, the sonic emitter only affects shooting rolls, so it's not gonna affect the enemies. Uh hand to hand, but Vine uh, hits him with his boarding saber and it is going to do a damage of plus one against the Lieutenant's toughness of three. Plus one takes out the Lieutenant. Ah! <laughs> okay, boom, that was on the enemy's turn. Oh, and there's two more enemies. I forgot about them. Duh. Okay, that's okay. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, can they charge up? Can they leap up and technically charge into battle? I'm thinking they can, man. Yeah, they totally can. Oh, they leap up and pull themselves up and we're gonna have brawls going on here. Ooh, it's gonna get ugly. One of them's gonna brawl Kale. The other is going to brawl Stein. Kale has a pistol, but he also has a blade. So he is able to pull his blade out. It's a good thing we gave him that a few episodes ago because now he's gonna be able to fight back. He's got no combat bonus though, so he's just gonna roll uh, with a plus two because he's got a melee weapon. And against the brawler cultists who only have shotguns, are they are they leaping into brawl with no melee weapons? Is that what their aggressive AI does? Oh, they will not enter a brawl with an opponent that has a higher combat skill. 
because both the captain and Stein have have combat skills of plus one. This guy's not. Ah, sorry, Stein. This guy's not going to move up. He's he's going to actually, he's going to move where he can towards the enemy, and then he's going to fire. So this guy is brawling with Kale, just because Kale is not a very good brawler. So Kale is rolling at plus two. This guy is rolling. He's got nothing but his shotgun, so this guy's rolling nothing. Kale could actually win this. Kale is the white. Two plus two is four versus one. He hits this guy. This guy's basically climbing up. Kale pulls his blade and stabs down on him, trying to hurt him. Uh, there's no damage bonus to this, and it's toughness three. And he takes him out as he's climbing up. Ah! Meanwhile, this cultist is going to fire, but he is within the sonic emitter range of five inches. He's going to fire at the captain with his shotgun. Two shots, no combat bonus. Captain has cover. This is going to be five up, uh, but minus one because of the sonic emitter. That's a two. That's a miss. Second shot, also a two. Blam, blam. That's missed. Now we go to the slow phase, which is everybody except four. Fine, because everybody else was slow this round. Let's go left to right here. Kale with his pistol now. Fires down. Pow! At three up. Does he hit him? He does hit him. Damage. And three is as tough as three. He takes out the last call test. Ooh, they won the battle. Nobody was hurt. I was so, I was so terrified over here that that power claw was going to come and get them. Okay. Wow. Total victory. Total victory. This is awesome. We're going to have to go uh, uh, and see what our post-battle phase brings us. Here we are in the post-battle phase. So first of all, we did in fact rescue the person of interest. So that is going to give us plus one story point. So we're back up to five. This intrigue. Roll 2d6 and add plus one if you kill the lieutenant and or a unique individual. Nines are up, there it is. Boom, we obtain a quest rumor. That's gonna be really great for determining whether or not this quest is in fact over. Resolve rival status. We fought an opponent that isn't a rival, and we did hold the field. We roll a 1d6 on a 1, they become a rival. No, no, they're too, too scared of us now. <laughs> quest progress, this is the big one. If you just fought a battle that was part of a quest, roll a d6. If you have obtained any quest rumors, which we have, we have four quest rumors. Add plus one for each rumor you have accumulated while on this quest. And we did win the battle, so... Here we go, d6 plus four, six plus four is 10. On a score of seven or higher, you're at the conclusion of the quest. Ooh, next time you pursue a quest mission, it will be the finale. This will always be a straight up fight. You must add plus one to the number of opponents faced and the opponents will be fearless. Okay, so uh, there is going to be the culmination of the quest. If the modified roll was a four or higher, which it was, roll a d6 with no modifiers. On a five or six, the next step is on another world. And you must travel before you finish it for no. Okay, so it is in fact on this world. So we definitely know what they found in the ruins of this temple are in fact the exact coordinates of where the stash is buried and it is here on Traxia 5 somewhere. They find an additional piece of information, a map, whatever, that points them to the stash. So they know it's here, they know it's close, and when they go after it, ooh, it's gonna be a tough one because they're gonna have to kill everybody. Great, so uh, we're, we're not at the end of the quest yet. So next time we pursue a quest mission, it will be the finale. We get paid, there was no extra things from fighting the criminal element, unfortunately, but we roll 1d6 for credits. We did uh, complete our objective, so defend, which means uh, we treat a roll of a one or a uh, two as a three and five. So we gain five credits from this mission, probably plundering the bodies of the dead and the, 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 the looting the ancient temple. Battlefield finds. If you held the field after the battle, which we did, we can search. Roll 1d100 once on the table. What do we find? 59, personal trinket. On each planet you visit in the future, roll 2d6. On a 9+, plus, you find the owner and receive a loot roll as payment. Check for invasion. These guys were not an invasion threat. Gather the loot. Roll once on the loot table to see what you've earned. Plundering the temple finds us a meditation orb. Ooh, that makes sense in a temple. The crew all feel reassured of their karmic balance. Add plus two story points 
All Swift or Precursor in the crew may also add plus one XP. It's a single use. Look at that. Awesome. Hoo-hoo. We're just going to spend that now. So our story points go up to seven. And the Precursor, Kale, gets plus one XP as he's examining the orb back at the ship, realizes what it does. It's a it's a meditation orb from, from his culture back when the, the Precursors actually roamed the galaxy and ruled the galaxy or whatever. And now we determine injuries and recovery. Nobody got taken out. Awesome. Experience and character upgrades. Well, Catria once again got first blood, so she gets and a bonus XP right there. That's up to four. Anyway, so everybody gets three. Killed unique individual. Who did that? I think Mara killed the in individual. Could be wrong. I'm gonna go back and review the tape. <laughs> I'll just assume it was her. Mara's at eight, so Mara, I think, needs to get that combat up. She's going to spend seven on that, but her combat now goes up to one. So she's going to be a much better shot with that rifle. Oh, seven for Kale. Kale also needs to get his combat up, man. I think he's going to spend the seven on the combat skill. Makes sense. He did a lot of combat this time and was very effective. And Kathria is also at seven. Oh, she could get her combat up to plus two. She'd just be a killer. I think I think her combat has to go up to plus two. <laughs> Invested advanced training. You must roll six or more to be approved for advanced training on this one. Again, advanced training is really good, but it costs a lot in XP and money, and we're just not there yet. Purchase items. Do we need to buy anything? Three credits. Let's do it. Let's let's spend three just to see if we get something cool on, like, a gadget or something. Here we go. What do we buy on Traxia? 70. A shock attachment. Ooh, this is a gun mod. Shock attachment. The weapon receives the impact trait against targets within eight inches. Ooh, it double stuns, basically. Items from this list must be fitted to a non-melee, non-single-shot weapon. So I can't put it on a hunting rifle, because a hunting rifle has one shot, but that would... Then why... How would you put, like, a, a bipod, which is plus one to hit at ranges over eight inches on a hunting rifle? That's a question, actually. Can anybody tell me how, how you think that works? Let me know in the comments below! <laughs> okay, campaign event here on Traxia. 20. You managed to mouth off to the wrong people. Add a rival. Okay. <laughs> Mouthed off to the wrong people as we were buying our stuff, maybe. Character event. Let's do a random uh, test here. What's the captain? The captain character event. Zero eight. You make some local friends. The character earns plus one XP. While he was mouthing off to the wrong people, he was saying all the right things to the right people. <laughs> Galactic War. So we are tracking because Putnik 2 was invaded. So we roll 2d6 and see what's going on with the war progress in Putnik 2. <gasps> oh no, it's lost to Unity. The planet is lost to the invaders and cannot be visited again. Oh, well, they got out just in time because the Swarm Brood utterly devastated and in Bested that planet. It's completely overrun. The only way to ever get it back would to be to, I don't know, have giant cruisers in orbit blasting down cannons to, uh, on some sort of extermination event. But that doesn't happen in this game. That happens in another game, which I'm not going to mention for fear of getting sued. That brings us to the end of this campaign round. So the next time we get together, we're probably going to finish this quest and go after the stash. We've taken down one unique individual. We've got two more to go before we, quote unquote, win the, win the game, win the miniature adventure game. Because I knocked it down from eight because that was too many. Okay, so uh, thanks so much for joining me here today. Please do hit like and subscribe. And if you want to help support us on Patreon or on YouTube, the links for all of that stuff is below. Check out our online shop where we do handmade merchandise. And uh, a big, a big uh, shout out to all of my patrons and supporters who continuously make it so much easier and so much more fun uh, to do this um, show on this channel. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time on Me, Myself, and I.